Shadow with Q102. And I'm Jason with Brown Derby. Um, we're bringing in a third, huh? That's right. We're this going. is the second time we've brought in a third. That's right. We had a lot of success for the first one, so we're doing a we're doing a threesome here. We felt that our relationship flourished after bringing in the third. That's right. So we got to talk about you know more booze and more alcoholic beverages and. Well, sometimes bringing in the third, they know actually more than we do. Correct. And since it's drinking 101, I guess we're supposed to teach people, right? That's right. It's sure. not right. just about drinking. So introduce... <laughs> what? Yeah. So introduce our guest. This is Gary Heingardner. Gary Heingardner. Uh, Gary Heingardner from Wood Hat <coughs> Distilling here in Missouri. Uh, what specific city? What part we're of Missouri? We're in uh, New Florence. New Florence. Which is about halfway between Columbia and St. Louis. Okay. So, you know, people notice it as uh, the Highway 19 and 70 Junction. Okay. If you go on 70, turn south to Herman. So we're just north of Herman on 70. Okay. So in other words, if you're lost. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it, yeah. got it, got it. So uh, what, <clears throat> why do we have corn? Because we grow our own corn. You know, if we're a, if we were a winery, it'd be about grapes. Sure. If we're about a brewery, it'd be about the malt. And corn, they say, how old is it? Well, because everybody uses the same corn. But we grow our own corn, we use different corn, and it makes different whiskey. So whiskey is all about wood and, corn and grain. So when you switch out the barrel or you switch out the corn, you really make a different whiskey. And, you know, Missouri, we're in whiskey territory. I mean, this is where all the barrels in the world come from. Really? Really. All the, you know, all the bourbon oh. barrels are here. Most cool. of the wine barrels are from here. And we grow the corn and everything, but we import all the whiskey. What's wrong with that picture? So. We're doing it different. We have, uh, we use the blue corn, the Hopi Indian blue corn, which is a really mellow corn, really big mouth feel. Uh, then we use a, a red corn. This is a real spicy. That's a, that's a super pretty corn. That's yeah, what it's that a pretty is. corn. It's a tasty corn. Really? Spicy, peppery. And this is a white corn. It's, um, it's in there. It's not that exciting. <laughs> but we do a red, white, and blue, and that's the three different corns. But we also use different barrels. We use chinkapin barrel, and we also do a regular white oak Missouri barrel. And then we toast the barrels, and we and we uh, toast the char barrels. the barrels. Yeah. So that's a toasted barrel, like a wine barrel. This is a charred barrel. I'm like, so is to it me, if, if we're talking about 101 here, right? To me, there's a correlation between those people who like their toast toasted. Sure. And there's versus those people who like their toast burnt. I've heard of those people. You know, so. I'm not one of them, if, but. Yeah, but if you're somebody that really likes your toast burnt, right. that's bourbon. Bourbon okay. is a burnt barrel. And we, oh. do a, we do a toasted barrel for those people that like just toasted exactly. toast. It's kind of like marshmallows. You know, we're very opinionated about what you do with a marshmallow. You right. burn, burn it. it. Yeah, so. That's but not toast. Yeah. And then you burn you the marshmallow, into, not toast. But when you get into whiskey, the same concept sure. is kind of there. So. Huh. And what Gary was ta talking to <clears throat> us about before we went on air, you know, local is big, uh, but there's really nothing more local than, I mean, they grow their own corn. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know of any other distillery in America that says that, that, you know, here in our backyard is where we grow our corn for our whiskey. Uh, they're basically controlling every, pro every part of the process. Um, you know, and that's that's unique in this day and age, and I, and I think it helps helps with the quality. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're also the only wood fired distiller in the United States. There you go. So well, we take scrap some. wood from a, big, a whiskey barrel factory and make more whiskey out of it. That's what we do. So the so first you one recycle here, too. We recycle. Also. There we go. The first one we're going to taste is a bourbon Reuben S. Reuben is that Dutch painter that did all the full bodied women. Full body naked, <laughs> well, naked women. I know a thing or two about full okay, bodied this women. This is a full bodied <laughs> bourbon here. So it's made out of the blue corn and wheat. It's a wheated bourbon and then it's aged in a chinka pen barrel. So it's a it's a 90 proof. I mean a hundred proof. Sorry about that. How long have really you full uh, bodied. how long you been doing this? Uh you mean when did I get my license? Is that what you asked me? Potato, yeah. potato. You mean how, how long have I legally been doing this? Right. Uh, we've been had our legal license for about three years. Okay. So it's got a really nice nose to it. You know, if you want to, on we're talking about 101. If we taste it at body temperature, duh, because it's our tongue. Mm -hmm. So if you put that to body temperature, before you put it in the mouth, then you won't have a shock. 
it'll be the same temperature as your taste buds and you'll get a better taste out of it. So if you'll warm that glass a little bit, just wow. bring it up to bottle temperature. And what it's doing, it's vaporizing here. So there's different kinds of vapors, just like there's different alcohols. There's a lot, Jason. You, no wonder I've always had a shock to the system. If you'll smell just the top of the glass. See, you didn't, it well, wasn't that you didn't like bourbon, you were just drinking it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but if you smell the top, it's got a really nice nose. And then, if you pour out those fumes that you just smelled, that I just drank, and then smell them just above the liquid level. Totally different aroma to it. Right. Whew, totally different. And actually, if you smell out of one nostril versus the other, you'll find they smell totally different. We smell different with the left and right. If it was cold outside, this would definitely yeah. warm you up. And if you s smell with your mouth open, it also yeah. changes your uh, what you smell. You get that the olfactory you know, That's right. really, really so much about taste is smell. So mm. I love this. This is uh, this is wonderful. So it's a hundred proof, but it's really smooth up front. We have a big pot still, eight hundred and fifty gallons. You pull off that burn. That burn that you taste in the mouth and the tongue is methanol. Mm -hmm. So when you drink a, a whiskey that's just fire, you can bet it's high in methanol. And we shouldn't be drinking methanol anyway. So it makes you go blind. But a whiskey that burns up front. Is that why you wear glasses? Yeah. <laughs> is, that why, is that why I need glasses? Right. Uh oh. And then on the same way, that as you swallow it and it goes down the backside. That's those long, build long alcohols that when our liver gets down there, they say, what the hell are we going to do with this stuff? You know, and it hangs around our body for a couple of days because they're toxins. We pull those off. So we just sell the heart section, call the heads for those people who do distilling. So this is our first one, the bourbon Rubinez. Okay. And then we do a unique thing that nobody else has ever done. You know, Missouri, we have a lot of different kind of wood and we age in oak not because it tastes good, but because it holds whiskey. Almost every other wood leaks. Oh, really? Yes, but they taste good. So we take this bourbon after we make it, and then I made some barrels out of pecan wood. So I age it here, and then I take it out there and age it further, and barrels are made out of pecan, hence the double wood. Mm -hmm. So this is our, this is our double wood. I'm behind here, been talking too much. I'm a now this is super a, this warm. is a 90 proof, but it's really got a big, big body. It's long body, and then boy, the back side has got that pecan finish on it that just hangs there, and it's just really leaves your mouth really nice. So it lowers the proof on it, so it's going to be softer. The pecan wood sweetens it, uh, so it's going to be mm -hmm. slightly sweeter. Um, what Gary was saying is that uh, all a lot of the woods other than oak leak, and he was saying he loses about 10% of his whiskey uh, over a three-month period aging it in these barrels. So really? He's actually losing money by taking oh, yeah. this process in place. But he believes, and you'll see the result, uh, that it actually uh, improves the flavor uh, and makes it a more unique product. So that's exactly the same bourbon. Oh, yeah. You taste it there, except pecan. Yeah, that one's definitely a little bit easier on the palate. It's bigger, bigger, longer. And now you're probably tasting that finish on it. Mm. Just a really nice finish on the back. Well, this side. one seems a lot like it. Well, in my whom, by the way, not a not a huge drinker of this. This one like goes down like a little hot. But maybe it's just this being left over and then going on this. But that one doesn't seem as well. Two things, this is 10% less in, in alcohol. So right. this is 100 proof, this is 90 proof. So that's part of it. The other part of it, uh, you are correct, if you remember from previous episodes, uh, your palate is somewhat softened yeah. now mm -hmm. by drinking this. So whatever you follow after that isn't going to taste as bold because you've, you've, right. you've shocked it, so to speak. So what if we would have done it the opposite way? This um, one first and then this one second. I don't know that this would have come off as sweet as it would have, okay. if that makes sense, right? Would you say? If we'd reverse the order? Could be. The first one, if you're doing if you're doing several, you know, that first one is a big get ready and go thing. 
and from that on, it's going to slow us down. So we're going to talk about this one. Yeah. So yeah, we are. We're in Missouri. That one looks very interesting. Black walnuts are famous. I mean, we're famous for black walnuts sure. in Missouri, and you're the only one that I'm aware of that even makes a black walnut liqueur. Why don't you tell us we're a little bit about this? We're the only one in the world that makes a black walnut. Isn't liqueur. that what everyone goes uh, hunting for? Like when yeah. and and then like you could actually make some money doing it, can't you? I'm oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just took them and put them in alcoholic form. Right. So but th <laughs> this is not made out of the meats. Right. This is made out of the green walnut picked off the tree. Okay. We actually picked these about the 23rd of June when the black, when the nut is not even formed yet. So it's a different, it's a nocino. If we were in Italy, this would be a medicinal type thing after dinner, just drink it. It's it's pretty unique. We're gonna have to drink this to drink this. No alcohol goes wasted here on drinking 101. It's true. Especially, especially Plus they bring out that spit cup thing for this wine is a tasting. Really unique. There's one company in California that makes it out of an English walnut. And of uh -huh. course, all over Italy, some France, Austria, they drink this as a as an aperitif, after dinner, digestive type of thing. It's they say, oh, it's good for health. You know, and it really is. It's really high in antioxidants. It goes great in coffee. It goes great in bourbon. See? So, so or just by drinks. itself. Just do this. And it's all Missouri. That's really nice. That's lovely. That's tasty. Yeah. That's like really good. I like it. It's there's like a lot, lot of stuff in there. It's just a little sweet. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I could only probably do one glass before I'm like. <laughs> well, put in your coffee every morning. You think about, it. oh, it's got antioxidants. You know, and that makes I do. It, that I do you like justify. putting liquor in my coffee. So, <laughs> yeah. I sounds, need to start sounds about coffee. right. Yeah, you okay. do. Just so, so you can, can put, put that in, in there. there. Yeah. Some people like in 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 ice cream and so forth. Yeah. I like it in bourbon. It yeah. makes a great. We can maybe make a thing called Mad Patton, which you take the bourbon. Walnut liqueur, and then we make another one out of blackberries. It's a little cherry on top. It's really good. I think uh, you guys had some of that. Yeah. Too well. I feel excellent. like you're somewhat of a mad scientist, and you can get that done for us. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah. Of our, course. Our a lot of fun. Guest. Yes. You know, our Missouri, second guest. We're, we're just we're just getting into the whiskey business. You know, for three generations, we didn't do anything except maybe somebody out in the woods doing a little bit of stuff, but. Missouri is a, is you a mean state. What, what you weren't we doing before you it. got your license? Could have been. <laughs> but as a state, we've typically produced the barrels, right. grown the grain, yeah. and imported all of our whiskey. Now, what is it about Kentucky that makes it better to put in a barrel than seven in the Missouri and sit in a barrel? It's all a Missouri barrel. There you go. I love it. I love it. All right, so definitely buy local. Um, are you guys, what yeah, are you we doing? Carry the wood, no, we carry the wood hats uh, mm -hmm. here in the store. Uh, we may be looking at some others. We're definitely going to be bringing this in. So I would. That's good. Looking forward good. on your on your shelf here at Brown Derby. So if you want to buy a local, stop by and pick some of this buy, up. Buy good local. Good yeah, local. Yeah, good local. Yeah. There's right. four. There's five bourbons made in Missouri, and we make four of them. We're awesome. That's all right. right. We we cheers at the That's end right. of this. Oh, cheers. cheers. You guys drank all yours. That's right. Yeah. Cheers. cheers.